What am I going to talk about, you may ask? Art supplies? The Iran-Contra affair? Maybe. Do I even know what a podcast is? Not really. Or I, why are they on YouTube? Are you supposed to edit a podcast? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just in case I'm going to do it wrong, I will be editing. Let's go. So I lost a bit of traction recently on social media because I started too many series at once. I stretched myself out too thin. Now I'm way behind. I don't really want to post old work or photos of my dumbass. There's been a little radio silence and my algorithm is it's gone a little slack. The thing is back in 2020, I did a solo exhibition in LA and it was sort of right when the pandy was heating up. It was all live streaming. I mean, they did what they could, you know, I mean, it, and it was fun because I love everyone at that gallery. But to be honest, it, it broke my heart that after 10 months of painstaking work, those paintings would really only be seen through the curator's cell phone. I mean, the photographs I took and stuff. Yeah, I'm sure she has a very fancy, nice phone with all the bells and whistles. But even a full frame ass camera doesn't really do an oil painting justice. A cell phone sucks all the motherfucking life out of an oil painting. I don't mind when people take pictures of the work at the show because at least a shit ton of people are seeing it in person. You know, I think our previous show had like something just under 4,000 people in attendance. And it's a great party. It's the party I need after 10 months of solitariness. Solid solitariness? Seclusion. Obviously, it's not the gallery's fault. I mean, there was a global pandy, but I just didn't see the point of shipping the work to a gallery for a live stream. So I stopped. I just, I respectfully declined uh, signing on for any exhibitions. And just take my time and see where the muses wanted to take me. In retrospect, fucking bitch. For the first time in 12 years, I didn't have a deadline, you know? Deadlines, I've come to realize, are the planks that keep this fucking ship afloat. Can we swear in a podcast? There's a lot of motherfucks up in here. So, no deadlines allowed me to start three separate series of paintings while finishing no paintings. Cut to two years later, and I'm releasing this girly series like fucking chapter plays. So here's one painting and then see you in three months, bitches. So, okay, the girly series. Two things happened back in 2016 within days of each other. Trump was elected and my mom died. And I'm not gonna get into politics because I enjoy my fucking sanity. But with Trump sort of all over the place, I noticed a very old fashioned macho attitude, kind of trending shall we say? That shit puts me on edge. I just go into danger mode, like a pissed off macho herd mentality. Not fun for the gay in the village, my fan we. On the other hand, it made some people into bitchy third grade hall monitors, which is <laughs> almost more insufferable. So I just felt surrounded by all the crazy. And then we had to go inside for two years. So I just felt like I reverted to when I was a kid up in my room, afraid to tell my parents I was getting tortured at school, just drawing Betty Davis all day. Having started all these different themes and variations over the last two years, I started to look at the work and kind of reflect on what I thought were the strengths and weaknesses of the work. It is really good to do that every so often for me, you know, just take stock. And it reminded me of, well, a really com important component in my particular style and that is a strong narrative. It's very clear that my stuff is fantasy based, right? I mean, it's one third transgender fantasy, one third classic movie cinephile, and then a final dash of moldy neuroses. Hey. But I think that my work didn't really become at all dimensional until I added my reality into the fantasy. In other words, the fantasy part would be playing the untouchable femme fatale archetype, but adding my reality puts her in a frozen landscape, wandering around blindfolded, feeling disconnected from a father figure 
and consequently unable to make contact with anyone. And then in second grade, I was really fat. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I would just need to paint flowery women adrift in clouds and lavender. And then Lindsey Graham would start spitting out of one of his fucking heads and I'd have to stop everything to launch into some grisly ass girly painting where she's tearing out some dude's heart. It's cathartic. <laughs> A few paintings in and I'm like, oh yeah, this is, th this is definitely my Tarantino movie. I'm not completely responsible for the bloodbath. It's the Proud Boys that made these girls so extra mean and faggy. I mean, there's always been a hint of sadism in my work, I think, but this series is just bloody balls to the wall, literally. When Texas rolled out their new handmaiden laws, out popped a girl who's having the Colonel Chief Grand Wizard for dinner. It's not a statement. I hate statements in art. It's an emotional reaction. It's like those angry mind rehearsals you have with someone you're mad at, but you couldn't think of what to say in the moment. My angry mind rehearsals just turn into super elaborate paintings. And you know, I, I get to play Betty Davis, so everyone's happy. Except Commander Fred Porkchop. So altogether, I think there's about 13 paintings in this series. The plan is to release them as they get finished. Think of them like serials, chapter plays. Did I say that already? Most of them are a headbutt to the patriarchy. And I use that word with a hint of mint. But I do have one piece in the show that I think is separate from all the other work because for me, it illustrates what I think is, in all seriousness, actually a very profound relationship that can happen between women and gay men. And I only mention this because I never, I've never painted a series with men before. This one has a few. And by the way, none of these paintings would work or be successful in the way that I paint them without a fucking sense of humor and love. And I hope people feel that, you know, under all the carnage. By the way, this isn't a sponsor. I just wanted to mention that in this new painting, uh, Ginger's Texas Grill, I tried a new paint I've never used before. It's a handmade oil paint called Vasari. And I bought a whole bunch of red tubes to test out and they are fantastic. Buttery and smooth, unbelievable pigment load and pig pigment load. A lot of other brands tend to be stiff. Since so much of my work is blended into oblivion, a buttery texture right out of the tube is really a good place to start for me. Again, they're not sponsoring anything. I just wanted to mention it because it's great paint. The end. I love you.